Is your house really cleaner than public places? By Isidore. A mask and gloves were worn while taking public samples. Format, let's go with formal, abstract. Most people, including myself, find public places unpleasant and roaming with bacteria. I myself do my best to not get dirty by washing my hands often and using hand sanitizer. However, are public places really as dirty as we imagine them to be? (laughs) Well, of course they are. Though, due to the recent and unfortunate pandemic, it has become mandatory for workplaces to be sanitized more often. Because of this, it is evident the public places are cleaner than they used to be, but are they still dirtier than our own homes? Samples were taken in both my house and public places with the cotton swab. Petri dishes were set up with agar nutrient and the cotton swabs were rubbed onto the newly formed agar gel. Six days later, the results were recorded. My hypothesis was that my house would have more bacteria than the public areas. The results supported my hypothesis showing that a little more bacteria grew with my house samples than my public samples. The experiment also showed that the results were very similar. Hypothesis. I predict that the samples from my home will grow more bacteria than samples from public areas as public workers may clean more often due to the recent pandemic. Problem statement. How does the sanitation of our home compare to the sanitation of public areas? When it's simplified, it's is your house really cleaner than public places? Oh, my apologies. So purpose. The purpose of my project is to convey evidence that our homes are more filthy than public areas. Once this evidence is shown, it is meant to persuade others to clean their homes more often so they can live in a hygienic home. It is also meant to show which public areas are cleaner than others. This is for you to choose cleaner public places to go, especially during the pandemic. Variables. An independent variable where I take my samples from. Dependent variable, how much bacteria grows in the Petri dish. Background information. To keep things in order, I listed several websites of me during this project. With the help of these websites, I learned how to make this project more successful. These things included what bacteria is, how to write this project, how to do the experiment, and more. They're all listed in the references. First and foremost, how I should do the experiment. I learned that to do the experiment, I needed to take samples from using sterile cotton swabs and set them aside. I then created agar gel using hot water and agar nutrient. The agar gel is then poured evenly and equally into the 10 Petri dishes that I am using. Once the agar gel sets in about an hour, I get the previously used cotton swabs and gently rub them on the set agar gel. I then close the Petri dishes and let the bacteria grow in a humid, warm, dark, and undisturbed area. Furthermore, I also learned I needed I also learned everything I needed to include in this Google slide, what I can add, and more. Last but not least, the cleaning disinfecting control. CDC states that workplaces should be cleaning their area. It shows what you need to do and how to disinfect certain, certain things, as well as how to keep others safe. This website shows that workplaces are, in fact, being sanitized more often. This website is in the references. Data. During this time, I know the area the bacteria will grow, what bacteria is, what colonies of bacteria are, more detail to how I should grow the bacteria, what I can do to help it grow, what each sample is, how long it will take to grow, and what to expect. And this was in January 27, 2021. What is bacteria? Bacteria are a type of biological cell. They have a large domain of microorganisms. Normally, they are a few micrometers long and have several numbers of shapes. These shapes can be spears, rods, spirals, and more. And then on the bottom, there are some examples of what they look like. What are colonies of bacteria? Colonies of bacteria is when a visible amount of microorganisms all come from a single cell. Because of this, colonies have a clone of bacteria that are alike. The agar powder helps us see these with the human eye. So on the bottom right, you can see different colonies. Let's go materials list. In this experiment, I used 10 cotton swabs, agar powder, 10 Petri dishes, a big container, a humidifier, some cardboard, a paper, and a marker, Honeywell thermometer, some Ziploc bags, and a heater. And just to clarify, the agar powder is agar nutrient. Procedure. First, I took samples around my house. These samples were the washing machine, dishwasher, kitchen counter, shoe placement, and a garbage can. Then I put samples in an airtight Ziploc bag, and I labeled these Ziplocs. Then next, I took samples in public places. These samples were at the back of sh- well, items at the back of shelves, shopping carts, pharmacy, outdoor playground, and a public toilet. Next, I put these new samples in airtight bags, in tight. Sorry. 
Uh, I then labeled the Ziplocs. I set up the experiment using agar nutrient and hot water to create agar gel. I put the humidifier, heater, thermometer, and petri dishes with the samples and agar nutrient inside of it, inside a big container. And then I checked on the bacteria every other day. So this is day two, day four, day five. I mean, day six. Sorry, I'll let you look at that. Okay, let's go next. Um, the acronyms to keep things short. HC, house cleanest washing machine. H2, house second cleanest dishwasher. HA, house savage kitchen counter. H4, house second dirtiest shoe placement. HD, house dirtiest garbage can. PC, public cleanest items at the back of shelves. P2, second cleanest shopping cart. PA, public average pharmacy. P4, public second dirtiest outdoor playground. PD, public dirtiest public toilet. Results. First, the top row is the house. The second row is the public places. The first column is the cleanest. Second column is the second cleanest. Third column is the average. Fourth column is the second dirtiest. Uh, the fifth column is the dirtiest. These are some graphs. Uh, there's a t-shirt and a bar graph. I'll let you look at those for a little bit. Okay, let's move on. So conclusions. Much to my surprise, many of the samples were hard for me to decide which was cleaner. However, I came to the decision that the public place had more clean areas than my home. I put each Petri dish with its other category. The categories are the acronyms. I then decided which of its category is the cleanest and which is would, and the one with the most would be the cleanest. The public place had three cleanest areas while my home had two. Even if my home had more clean areas than public places, it scares me how similar the results were. So I'm definitely going to clean my home more often. I'll let you look at the picture below. Okay, let's move on. The reference list, National Geographic, a video, WikiHow, Home Science Tools, CDC, BASEF Rubik, and the BASEF website. All were found on January 5th, 2021. Acknowledgements. Firstly, my mother was a big help because she was able to find and obtain most of the materials I needed in order to do the experiment. Some of these include the thermometer, the big container, the bacterial kit, condensed swabs, agar nutrient, and petri dishes. And next, I'd like to thank some of my classmates and the teacher for answering some questions and completing the survey, which helped me determine where to get the bacterial samples. I'd also like to thank Mark Minor for answering more important questions that I had. Last but not least, the websites I listed in the references were also helpful to stay on track and plan what I was going to do. Thank you for watching this video of my presentation. I am sorry I missaid some words, but I hope you understand it.